Good morning, Mr. Perez. Thank you very much for joining us again to this uh, fireside, uh, fireside chat. First question. You joined the labor market recently, the job market. You joined it recently. How you find the job market after being uh, president? Which market? The job, job market, you know, new, new employments. I should, I should. <laughs> not bad, <clears throat> not bad at all. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was looking for a job. Finally, I find one. <laughs> not bad. Okay, and uh, we have here many guests from abroad. Do you want to to share with them your uh, your opinion on the Israeli high tech? What do you think? What is your really opinion on this sector? I think that, contrary to the impression, it is really a story of bottom-up, and not from up and bottom. Namely, a great deal of individuals daring, pioneering, taking risks, and uh, not looking for any formality, and not looking for any order. You know, our concept is that the world started with the Genesis. The Genesis was a total balagan, as we call it, tohu vavohu. Balagan in, uh, in uh, English is tohu vavohu. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and it is always in tohu vavohu that I think things are being created. I think the first place, if you want to start up, is look for a tovavo, where people are free, can go around without any administration, without any rules, and then take a while, have a dream. Only then begin to act. After you feel totally free, and after you feel flying to a new district in life, then have a look what can be done that wasn't done before it. And I am a great believer in dreams, in freedom, in individual people. I do believe that every person is by far richer than he thinks, than his mother thinks, his father, or, uh, the teachers. All of them underrate the content of the human hidden capacities. And I think startup is really enable every person after he was born to have a startup of his own. So it's a story of many individuals, many daring people, many dreaming people, many people who are freedom minded. And I read the book so it was started this organization, that organization well, since I can say that I was at the start, and I believe I, that I know how it started, it didn't start in an organized way. It started by pioneers, daring people who are not afraid to dream, who are not afraid to take a risk, and then you can really fly high. When you look at the virtues of your generation when they created this wonderful startup which is called the, the State of Israel and you look on modern day startupists, the people which are doing startup today, how you compare these two people? Do you see a continuation of the DNA or do you see something totally new? Well, at the beginning the people who really introduced the startup faced a tremendous opposition. They weren't considered serious people. You know, one of the funny things, among my other jobs, I was Minister of Finance. And I found out that in the Minister of Finance, they recognized hard well as industry, Software, no. 
when I told the, the people in the ministry we are going to recognize software as an industry, they thought that I'm crazy. So every, everybody was looking upon it as some crazy idea, something that they have to forgive. And now, first of all, there is a wider support and more understanding. And uh, it raised a new echelon of people who were not jumping ahead, but looking ahead and then jumping ahead. It's a new atmosphere. And I believe what uh, I'm dissatisfied with the new community of investors, of uh, scientists, is that they don't understand how serious their responsibility is. They are ba be much be behind their own learned uh, faculty. I think uh, each of you is in a new way a leader, but not a leader that has learned his task by precedence or by books, but a leader who doesn't look for existing ways, but he starts walking, and while he walks, he paves a way. And it's needed because we have to save our lives from two things, from wars. Wars is the most dangerous malady, judging by the number of uh, victims, people who pass away, or people who lose part of their bodies. And the other is uh, uh, starvation, lack of food. We can answer it today. There is no real need for peace. It's a bitter memory that follows up without any reason. There was a taste for war when we were making our life out of the land or real estate. Everybody wanted a little bit more. When it comes to science, wars cannot help. Armies cannot win. Police cannot ar arrest. Borders cannot stop. Imagination cannot brought down and say, that's it. So you're all the time in a leading position. Leading not to be ahead, but to go ahead. And also it's a very interesting thing because it's a double leadership. On one hand, you have to serve your clients. If you won't serve them, you lose them. On the other hand, you have to offer the science the things that they don't know and they don't ask for, and they can really advance them. So it's a double sort of uh, leadership. In real terms, personal, in groups, and if I have one prayer, don't become a government. I say you know, now at the Saber, they won't have one organization, another organization, God forbid. Organizations are limiting. Organizations are controlling. And you have to behave, but not to be too organized. I think an air of freedom is important more than a strict administration. And when I see the courses about leadership, I say, my God, they're spoiling people. There is no more need for leadership. What is needed is for people who are ready to serve other people by moving ahead. To serve, <laughs> not to rule. Thank you. Uh with your permission, I would like to move to another thing. All of us know that you like to be at the front of things, to see what the young generation is doing, that you are now taking a certain interest in 
augmented reality. So we have here a team from the Technion, uh, which want to show you something and to ask your help. They need your help in a certain thing. So can you please come over? Amanche, Kvod Amanche. Yair, Yair Moshe is the tutor of this, uh, of this team. Yair, are you willing to introduce to the president what you are going to show? Your, I will give you the microphone. Thank oh, you. you see, the president gave you the microphone, so I can continue to talk. Go ahead. Um, so what we have here is an augmented reality pinball game developed by a undergraduate students in our department under my supervision and with the, yeah, my name is Yair Moshe and Department of Electrical Engineering in the Technion. This project was partly funded by Intel. And this is the final project of the students in, in their, uh, for gaining their BSc degree in our department. Uh, pinball game is a classical arcade game where you have to uh, cause a, a ball made of steel, uh, you have to gain a maximum amount of point, and when the ball hits some obstacles, you gain more points. When the ball falls to the bottom of the game, you lose. Mr. President, when is the last time you played an arcade game? I never stopped. <laughs> So here, here we have an augmented reality pinball game. The game is composed of real objects that uh, soon will help us to arrange on the, on the board and some virtual objects. We don't have a ball here. The ball is in the computer. It's projected by a standard projector. And everything that happens on, this, on the board is acquired by a standard camera, standard webcam, standard computer camera. We have a standard laptop. So all the arrangement here is common hardware, um, and the ball will be able to interact, the virtual ball will be able to interact with some virtual, with some real objects. So uh, it's possible to draw on the board or to put some uh, objects, and these objects and drawings will be the obstacles for the virtual ball. Yair, how, how many years you are in the Technion? Sorry? How long you are in the Technion? Uh, more than 10 years. Uh, I graduated there and I worked as an engineer and also a PhD student and supervisor of... And can uh, you introduce to us your two, two young colleagues? Yes, um, this is uh, um, Gal Elhanati. Um, is the, and uh, Yuval Brave. Another student is currently abro abroad, uh, Gal Steinfeld, and they did all the work. Okay, let's, let's so go to work. Let's please go to the board. So we already drew some initial drawings and there are some objects that you can put whenever you want and these will be the obstacles for the game. So you can just put them whatever you want here or here. Okay, just put them like this. And another one somewhere here. Okay, that's okay. Okay, let's, let's. okay, let's put it a little maybe down so the ball would have some space to move around. Okay, and now um, we will have some. Now you, Yuval will play the game. In a minute, in a minute the game will be played here by Yuval. The projector is off, so we have to turn it on. Just a minute. And in a minute, we'll see everything projected on the board. The projector is now turned on the projector, and soon we'll, be all, we'll see all the arrangement of the game here. So everything is virtual expect, except these uh, real things, these real drawings and real objects on the screen. Just a minute. OK. 
Okay, and now we press play. Okay, this is the, the game. Yuval will, will cause the flippers to move using his hands. So these flippers are virtual, but using his hands, he can control the game, and the ball hits the objects. Now, this is actually an improved version of the original game, because as you can see, the, the ball can he lost. So the ball can be larger or smaller. If he hits uh, circle objects, the ball becomes larger, and rectangular objects, it becomes smaller. Also, the ball gets the color of the object he hits. So these are things that are not possible in the real game. By the way, there's also audio, so if you can turn it on. Oh, that's the audio of the game. Here, this is a cannon where, where we start. The, the ball uh, comes out from this cannon and is thrown to the game. And he can control the flippers using his hands. Yeah, the, go, the, the aim of, of the game is not to let the ball fall down. And he gets more points as the ball hits some obstacles. So all these are real, real uh, drawings and real objects, and everything else is virtual. So it's a real prototype system of augmented reality. This technology can be used for, you have to be from this side, because the camera is all, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a real system, very portable. You can move it from place to place. Oh, it only works here in, the, in this area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. President, do you need one like this for your new office? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the State of Israel and the team from the Technion, thank you very thank much. You. Our trio. Okay, we will we will take one or two questions.